Hello AOS fans, Robin here from Agents of Sigmar and I'm back once more with a tutorial for Warhammer Underworlds Online. Um, I did the first two a couple of weeks ago. Um, there's been, obviously the coronavirus has been going on. I have been fine, but it's taken away my attention from online gaming. Uh, but I'm back today with tutorial three. Um, I hope you're all well, I guess to a certain extent, uh, if you are stuck indoors with not much to do, then this is a great time to check out Warhammer Underworlds online. Though I do appreciate there are lots of worries out there at the moment, so maybe it will seem a little trivial, but it's a good distraction. And so now I'm finally back with the third tutorial. Today I'm actually going to look at what is the second tutorial uh, in the Warhammer Underworlds game, uh, which is how to play the cards. So in my first video, I looked at just what the game is, and in my second video I looked at how the gameplay works. Uh, which I think is a little bit more complicated than how the card play works. And in this third tutorial, I'm going to look at the card play. So let's go straight into it and have a look. So we start when we click on begin. And we go over to tutorials and we've got cards and glory. So we're going to look at how cards and glory works today. So here we are, we're going straight into it. This is round one. And what's going to happen? So the battle lines are drawn and that our, our fighters are on the table. We haven't got to do all that lot, uh, but here we have our objective cards. So down here, you, at the start of the game, you get uh, you draw three objective cards. Obviously, you've pre-constructed your decks. Uh, we've talked about that before, so you'll have a deck of 12 of these, um, and then you'll have a deck of at least 20 power cards, um, which is over here on the left-hand side, and you draw five, but they'll be from a deck of 20, and you have the ones with the little cogs on, uh, which are your upgrades and the ones with your swords on which are your ploys and you can have you must have at least 10 upgrades and you must have you cannot have more ploys than you have upgrades so that's why it's always a deck of at least 20 um, click OK and draw their cards and then rolling off to go first they have won the roll off they got more crits than we did um, and so they're just going to close down for, to, to, to get the gap the the way this has been set up, the forces are quite far apart. I've just looked at the five objective tokens there. So each of these are objective tokens and they do correspond to some of these cards for holding them if you have a fighter. Score this at end phase if you're if you're holding one or more, uh, holding objective one. So I'd be looking for objective one, which is here. And if I stand on that, I will score that objective at the end, in that's during the end phase. So the game is split into two phases the action phase and the end phase and in the action phase that's when you have your activations and that's when you move about and do your fighting um, and most of the cards are then scored in the end phase which goes on afterwards uh, after that after four activations each you then go to the end phase and you might score cards there and as we've seen in a minute there are some ways of scoring during the action phase so during the, the gameplay phase you might actually score some cards we'll see that in a minute um, so let's see what happens shall we okay so they've gone straight in and played sidestep. So uh, they uh, did they draw a card? I, I, no, they moved, and I, I didn't even see what they did. They did it so fast. But uh, we're, what we're going to do is they've obviously had an activation, and then after an activation, you have the power step. So you've got the you've got the action phase with your activations, and you've got your end phase where you score your, your glory. But in in between the activation, so in your action phase, you have an activation. So you're one one of you has an activation. And then you have the power step where you can play cards and then somebody else will have an activation and then there'll be another power step um, and it, in the power step the person who's go it was who had the activation plays the first power card um, so in this case we're going to push and go onto an objective marker i'm going to select and drag sidestep put it into the play area and then we're going to click on Angarad and just pop her off the objective. Start up's a really great card. It enables you to basically move for free because otherwise moving is an activation. So you can't move very far, but you can move. So if there was a fighter here, I'd now be able to attack them without having charge, which is really powerful. When we're done, uh, we can go on to the next activation and we play or pass. So that's my activation. Instead of activating a fighter on your turn, you could discard an objective card you don't think you'll score and try to get a better one. Now you want to try to avoid doing this in fact, although it is the kind of simplest thing you can do almost in the game, you always want to avoid doing it. So when you're picking your power cards, you're picking your objective cards, you want to try and pick ones that you can score in most circumstances. That's not always going to be possible if you're going for this kind of whole objective style of play. Uh, sometimes they are going to be right in the backfield and you're not going to be able to, to score them. However, if you, generally speaking, if you can't score two out of three 
of your objective cards at the start, because you can mulligan your cards when you first draw them, you want to be throwing them away. It's quite a wa it's quite wasteful. There are times when you might do it, and there are certain builds that look to do it, but it's quite wasteful to actually draw and discard an objective card, even though you can do it every turn if you want to. Um, so we're going to hold our objective four because holding objective four must be uh, over here somewhere. There it is, yes. And uh, so we're going to get rid of our old objective four. And we've got our old objective five, luckily, which is right here. So that's much easier to score. Uh, and then that is an act that is essentially an activation, even though we haven't moved anybody. So then we go to the power step. We've got upgrades here mostly. We've already played one ploy. I will say again, if you draw at the beginning, you draw your five cards. If you have mostly upgrades, if you have four or five upgrades, and either therefore none or one ploy, you almost certainly want to be throwing those five away and start again because ploys you can play straight off the bat. They tend to have very powerful effects that are immediate. You don't need any glory to, to equip your upgrades. You need to score any glory. Of course, you start off with zero glory. If you've got three, depending on what they are, you might keep them or you might throw them away. It's kind of a case-by-case -case basis almost. So we're not going to do anything at the moment. We can't play Righteous Zeal. This is not our attack next, so we don't want to give plus one damage to the first attack activation because we're not in the next activation because we're not going to be attacking. So we want to get rid of that. No, we don't want to get rid of that. We don't, just don't want to use that yet. So we're going to pass. And then McGaw may be doing something. They're not doing anything, but the dog is coming in. I think he's going to move up. We'll see. Here he comes. So that's Riptooth moves up to here. And uh, he always oh, played Blood Slick Ground, which is minus two. Um, so we can, can't. They play uh, Blood Slick Ground, which gives minus two to movement. Blood Slick Ground has been played, which means your fighter's movement will be reduced during the next activation. You won't be able to charge the enemy. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to charge the enemy, but we have other options apparently. Passing our power step, you can set it to auto pass the power step if you've got nothing to play. Uh, you might want to do that once you've been playing a little bit longer. Uh, and the other thing you can do is you can draw power cards. Um, and again, there might be reasons why you want to do this. Stormcast do it fairly often because they um, uh, they only they only have three fighters, so you might actually think, well, okay, I've only got three activations. Might as well draw a card because once I've done three charges, I can't do anything else. So draw a card at the beginning to give yourself a bit more uh, possibility of, of influencing play with your cards. So we're going to draw a card. We've got Peel of Thunder, which will be useful, uh, but we're going to use it in a moment. So it's basically a distraction card. We can push somebody off one hex. It's a movement card, push an enemy. So we have Sidestep, which enables you to move your fighters and. Uh, this one, Peel of Thunder, and there's another card called Distraction, which enables you to move uh, people off. And they're very powerful cards, very useful. We're going to hold on to them. Pass the power step because we haven't got anything else we want to play at the moment. And the activation, they're going to move forward, it's moved on to another uh, objective. And then, okay, now I can play multiple power cards. You can play more than one, but you do keep alternating. So we're going to start with Peel of Thunder, which is the distraction card. So we drag it forward and click on Riptooth, and we're going to push him to there. We could push him any in any direction, but for the tutorial, it wants us to push him there. We can now uh, move on bit on to the uh, Objective 5, but we're going to attempt to take out Riptooth in one hit. And we're going to do that. We're going to play Righteous Zeal, which is plus one damage to the first attack action with a range of one or two in the next activation. So it's just in the next activation, so we do need to charge this time. Now, if we had a situation where this, these they had a sidestep card left, or maybe something that they could put here so we couldn't charge them, because uh, you can get a shard for which blocks a hex, we wouldn't be able to reach, and suddenly we would have wasted our cards. So there is a bit of kind of to and fro, tit for tat in playing cards, and something you do need to consider. Luckily for us this time, they haven't got any such shenanigans, so we're going to make a charge and go on to objective five. So we're going to select Obrin, we're going to select his Sigmarite Grand Hammer. We're going to charge to there and we're going to attack him. Oh, we're going to choose Rip 2. So in we go. Oh, we're lucky we've got just about the best possible hit. And we have killed Rip Tooth, uh, which means we have scored a glory, which means we can now uh, use power card, spend it on a power card. So upgrade to power cards that can be attached to your fighters to improve their stats or give them new abilities. Equipping upgrades. To equip an upgrade, you must spend glory of earth. Don't worry, spend glory still counts towards your overall score at the end of the battle. So there's two kind of things going on there, uh, but the total glory is, is how close you are to winning. Uh, and but any of this gold unspent glory is actually you can use to boost your fighters. And we can add great speed now 
because it'll make severing faster and we can do that now I will say that you have to do time carefully when you're going to play your upgrades because it's often best to place them when it's just before your turn rather than just after your turn because if you do it just after your turn the person knows that that fighter's got a particular powerful upgrade and may try and kill them in this case separate so far back it doesn't make much difference but um, probably normally I would wait until it was my turn because the game state might have changed I might decide actually I'd be better taking it with Angara for some reason I don't know and I could play it then so um, just watch out for that you, it's a bit of an experience thing and it does take a little time to get used to Okay, so now they're on three objectives, so I'm not going to let that stand apparently. Um, so I've still got nothing to play, I've got no glory, I've got no ploy, so I can't play anything. So um, I'm going to go for activation four now. <coughs> Excuse me. Severin can now move much further, so rush up and attack Sarkas and drive him back. That's the plan. Now normally, I mean, it's the tutorial, so the um, these things are likely to work out much better than then uh, they might in a real game, because I'm probably almost certainly going to hit, but I'm going to charge there, uh, and then I'm going to click to play, the, I'm going to click his Sigma right board sword, and I'm going to choose to attack him here, I'm running on to there, I'm going to whack it with my sword, two hammers, just a shield, and two successes to one success, so I am successful, I will just push him back to there, I can, I'll push him back, but I didn't score any glory for that, I didn't kill him, you only get glory when you kill somebody, not just when you hit them, and now it's the end phase, so we all have we have four activations, and now we move on to the end phase, and the person who started first uh, scores their glory first. Um, so they've got the whole objective two, so they've got one glory, and they've got whole objective four as well, so they've got to score two glory. Um, so they get the glory for that, and then they, then you at that point you would uh, discard any cards you want to get rid of. You can discard your objective cards and. But you and you can also play any upgrades that you want to play uh, on your fighter, and then you can discard any upgrades that you or ploys you want to get rid of, and then you draw a new card. You draw back up to five. Um, Magor is using his newly earned glory to equip his fighters for the next round. It's fair enough. So any glory you spend, you can then spend, as I'm sure we'll see in a minute. Collected rather, what you can then spend. Um, okay, so we managed to score all of our objectives. We've got our objective one because we're on objective one here. Objective 5 over here. Sigma's Boar is where we don't take any damage, so it's quite a good card. Um, and uh, if, you're, if you're, especially if you're sitting back, it's quite a good card. So we've now actually got a total of four glory, three of it's unspent, so we can spend some on our cards. We can put Great Fortitude on Obrin. I will say it's probably best once you've got these cards, make a decision, play it on somebody, and use it as soon as you can because you know, people can do damage, take fighters out, and so best to beef them up. So he's now got up to five wounds. Uh, and Lightning Blade is a restricted card, it's restricted to Steelheart only. So we, we, we're going to play it, and again you, when you're deck building you might want to think about this because cards that are restricted to single fighters obviously have a drawback that if that fighter is dead you can no longer use them and they're dead in your hand. So we're going to play that, drag it forward, put it on separate, and there we go. So then it appears down here, look, All right, doesn't that have great speed. Uh, it appears over here is the attack over here. Lightning Blade on a critical hit, this attack action has plus one damage. So, um, you get ready to draw back to five cards, three objective cards. So, we're going to basically redraw re everything, and there we go. Round two. Round two, and um, <clears throat> Gartok, so they won that roll off. Gartok's coming in straight away, it gets severed straight onto the objective. Always got a good roll and I've only rolled a defensive uh, dodge so he's inspired and I haven't and he's used healing potion as well to heal his fighter which is really good and, he rolled a, 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 and he's got two damage for healing potions a card where if you um, roll a shield or a crit you get two wound tokens healing potion is a good card we're going to put it on severing we didn't roll a, a, a shield or a crit, so we only get one, because he got two back on his. Uh, it wasn't expected to be light, but on we go. The power step continues. We're going to pass, in fact. So my activation, you know, a lightning blade. Um, lightning blade has a rage character to two, and I'm to attack Gartok without needing to move or charge. Okay. 
Click on seven here, so we've got two choices. This one's greyed out because we can't reach as we stand. Um, and so we're going to attack with this one. And we're going to attack there. And we get a hammer, and he's got a shield. Some power cards are reactions. Uh, uh, some power cards are reactions and cannot be played normally in the power step, so they trigger automatically in response to specific conditions. So we've got a reaction here, I could choose to play, I could pass, uh, or I could play Tireless Assault, which is basically when I fail an attack, I can do that attack again. Might not leave, might not use it, it's only a one damage attack, but for the sake of this tutorial I will. Um, I'm going to play it, and I'm going to hit. We've done two damage because we've got a crit now, Lightning Blade, plus one damage when we had a crit. Hasn't offered the opportunity to push back. Oh, that's because Gartok can't be pushed back, isn't it? Yes, not because it's special, it's special ability, which it can't be pushed back. Magor's coming in here, throwing a hammer. I've rolled a shield. Um, oh, Magor has cleave, I believe, so he has done damage there. Um, and I'm passing the past up again. So there, there, there's some charges there, doing some damage. Some objectives are scored midway through a round. Instead of waiting uh, for the end phase, let's use Angara to score lightning strikes during this activation. So these are the score immediately cards. So lightning strikes is to score this immediately if an enemy fighter is taken out of action by a charge action made by one of your fighters. So this is quite a good card. It does mean you have to commit because you do have to charge. Um, but we'll see what happens. As a tutorial, I think it's a, we all know what's going to happen. So we click on there and then we. So we got a good good roll there. Now we've killed someone. Lightning strikes. Okay, so we've scored that objective. We've got the glory for it. So we've got two for that kill. We've got one for the kill and one extra. And um, you immediately draw a new card. So we draw or inspire. You score this immediately if your warband has two or has taken out two or more fighters out of action in this phase. And now we've. Got brave strike. We can put brave strike on Obrin, roll an extra attack dice if there are no adjacent friendly fighters. So we're going to do we're going to do that. So we're going to play that forward. Put it on Obrin and pass the power step to continue. Okay, they, it says the Blood Warriors are determined to hold on to this point, with Zarkus leaping over the four of Gartok to viciously strike and Garad. Striker you. Oh, two hammers. It's going to move and Garad off, but she did roll a shield, so she is now inspired. And they scored no escape. So no escape immediately. They scored immediately for, for charging with three fighters this round. I think we see no escape. They scored this immediately. Three or more of your fighters made a charge action in this phase, so they immediately score that. That's a good card for them. Power step, pass the power step to continue. My activation. Okay, Severin's going to attempt to do some smiting. Uh, he wants, we're going to use a Sigmarite broadsword attack. Um, so we're going to click on Zarkus. Sigmarite broadsword, three damage. This will kill him. Oh, but he missed. So it doesn't kill him. Now, this isn't a card effect, but it's uh, some fighters have their own effects. Which automatically can take effect so he can take a reaction now uh, which is attack back it's not a very strong attack but it is a free attack he failed and I know inspired uh, as well so in some ways that was a big negative on his gore fist attack there but it can be useful extra little bits of damage here and there attacking is very powerful we have great strength he's ex even extra damage and he counts on all types of attack that's really quite strong if you can pull it off so this apparently presents us with an opportunity we can't smite the corn warrior we can't at least dislodge him from that objective we're going to use confusion which is a pretty strong card you can choose two fighters that are adjacent to each other and switch them so we're going to click on severin we're going to click on zarkus and then switch over there we go can be could be powerful really good all of the time in that card um, he's got rid of objective three and I'm going to pass the power step my activation four with break strike we'll do less damage to the Sigma right grand, grand hammer with Aubrey standing by himself he'll roll one more dice and have a better chance of hitting McGaw it's interesting he's going McGaw I might have come over here I've got I've got supports here um, and, and I might have been able to actually take Zarkus out but they want me to attack uh, McGaw so we're going to click on Obrin. So you see his attack here does three damage with the supports. I think I'd have gone for that. 
gone for that chance, but we're going to uh, attack old Magor here. Oh, and I did two damage, which, which is good, and I will just push Magor back into there. Press the power step. Nice cool rooms of blood for uh, at least some damage. Every fighter having taken at least some damage, they score rooms of blood because they, they, they do like their blood. Cool guys, hold objective five, they're getting rid of. And he's put great strength on Zarkus, which makes him pretty deadly. What have I got? Scoring my objectives. I've only scored one this round. Hold objective three. And then discard my objectives. I can choose to discard or keep any. Uh, Scored objectives in my hand. Drag the objectives onto the player, discard them, or click pass. We'll keep whatever's left in your hand. I've got Eternals. Score this in the end phase if none of your fighters are out of action, or, or inspire. Score this immediately if your warband has taken two or more fighters out of action. I'm probably unlikely to score both of those because I'm going to have to attack people. I'm probably going to die. Uh, let's risk because Eternals are worth three. Let's gamble. Let's let's. Oh, that's better. okay. Let's get rid of all inspiring, but keep Eternals. So we'll pass. Keep Eternals. Um, if you have Unspec Glory, you can upgrade. And it's probably worth it because if I get rid of this one, I can draw more cards. This adjacent fighter and all friendly fighters go on guard as an action. So it's like a special action that I can do. It's not actually that great a card, but I will pop it on Angarad anyway. I've got some spare glory. I'll pop it on Angarad. Um, I could regret that. I think I'd be inclined not to take that card. Um, probably should have thrown it away. Uh, round three, uh, we've learned about using ploys of uh, greatest objectives, and now apparently I can finish round three. Well, I'll try and quickly run through that. I've lost the roll off, so my first activation, because their first activation rather, but Gore's coming, right, he's coming right over here. It's Severin, Severin's successfully defended. Demonic, demonic resilience uh, only suffers one damage. Well, that's a bit of a blow. Okay, so choose a friendly fight to put on guard. Can I be driven back? Unstoppable strike against Cleaver. Well, in some ways, there's not much point in that. I've got Eternals. Now, do I get play in the game? Um, you know what? I'm actually going to. So I'm not going to do anything there uh, with those cards at the moment. I'm going to run away with Angarad. Okay, so I want to keep my guys alive, so I'm, going to, I'm still going to pass my activation. I know Zarkus has got great strength on him, so this may not work. Actually, I don't need to do that now. I've just realised something, but I can only do one damage for them. So, what am I going to do? I think. Well, I think I'm going to trust the luck. I'm going to trust the luck. I'm going to put Angara back here. Um, it's probably this could be a really dumb thing to have done. Uh, and then I'm going to block her in as well, so she's nice and safe in there. So probably now Severin will probably die. Oh, I probably should have put him on guard. Oh, he played healing potion again. That's, just, that's definitely cheating. Playing healing potion twice. Um, they've already played it earlier in the tutorial. I'm going to put my man Severin on guard. That's my activation too. So. Seven's on guard, isn't he? I don't want to move him in that case. So, uh, I'm going to use him to attack. They're both on guard, so this might go wrong. I see. Didn't go wrong. Well, that worked out rather well for me. So, I'm going to pass here.
So I've now got my, I should have looked at these, I just kind of got cracked on without looking. I've got Deny, I'll score this a third in face if there are no fighters in your territory. Well that's looking good for me because he's charged and there are no fighters in my territory, just make sure I mustn't push them back. I've got Annihilation, if I kill everybody, uh, it's going to be hard to kill him. Uh, they get five in eternal if I don't take any damage and it's going to be half in to damage me now. So, I've forgotten whose go it is next. Uh, I don't think it's mine, I think it was just my go, so I'm going to pass. There, oh, it's my, oh, it was mine. Oh dear. Oh dear. Right. Okay, well. No, I didn't want to do that. I want to, I do want to charge with him. I'm going to use this one to charge there. Oh, successfully defended. Oh, we'll just push, push it back to there. And this is why you should always keep pay attention to what's going on. So, uh, I'm going to pass. Uh, okay, I'm going to play Unstoppable Strike. Uh, no need to play that uh, past that. Uh, for my final attack, I'm going to charge over here. I will get extra dice, that one only two damage, it doesn't really make a difference, I'm going to do this one. Um, and I've got cleave, so that's a good thing. Unfortunately, I'm not going to kill everybody, I need to hit with both attacks to kill Magor. Um, but it will pass to power step. Did score Eternals because there are none of them out of action, and I did score Denial, which is a pretty great victory. I don't score Annihilation, which would have really been uh, insulting. Had I scored that to my opponent, so that's a pretty great win for me there. There it is. Four, fourteen, five. Only I managed to score Annihilation as well. So that's it. I hope you found that useful. I didn't quite know what to do at the end. I was paying much attention, but hopefully you found that useful. If you've got any questions, do pop them down in the comments below. And if you are just joining us in Agents of Sigma, do subscribe to the channel and do click the like and all that jazz uh, for the uh, video too. And we'll see you soon. Bye.